Welcome. Thank you very much. This is the uh, Docs Office Hours for Jenkins European, uh, and it is Thursday, May 9th. Uh, for today, we've got an agenda already planned out. Uh, we have localization and internalization with Alex, if he ends up joining us. We have the June LTS change log, uh, an upgrade guide and blog post, which uh, I've added, and we can, we'll discuss further. The require a Java 11 epic and the tasks associated with that. Uh, Basil has done a great job of compiling all of that, putting that together and creating the tickets for us. So we'll go over that and see what else we can uh, do for them. And finally, our She Code Africa, Africa Contributhon. Um, it's re getting close to wrapping up. Mark Wade will tell us more about that. So first off, uh, uh, it doesn't look like Alex is here yet. So uh, but if, Mark, I'll give a quick status report, Kevin, yeah. if that's okay. And then, yeah. so this, this can be really a, a nice story to tell that we now have eight plugins on crowdin.jenkins.io that are managing their translation process with Crowdin. And Bruno has been a great contributor there, contributed translations into French language for many of them. Uh, it's looking really good. I've got an open question that I need to discuss with Bruno further, because this is a great way to contribute to an open source project and would be a really nice story for Hacktoberfest. However, the Hacktoberfest counting system requires that they be done by pull requests. And the pull requests here are being submitted by a bot that collects multiple changes from multiple contributors into a single pull request. So as it sits now, Crowdin is not a great choice for a Hacktoberfest, Hacktoberfest con contribution. Uh, but I wanna talk to Alex about it in case he's got some idea of ways that we might be able to make it fit better. And, and that's in part because of this, how to encourage translation contributions. I'm wondering as a separate story, is there a way we could motivate and inspire people to contribute? Some form of leaderboard or some form of thanks, yeah. thanks to our top con five contributors showing the crowdsourcing idea. So those are topics for me. Then as the very last point, uh, Darren Pope and I are going to do a live stream, probably one hour, uh, on internationalizing Jenkins. Uh, I've learned some things about what it means to internationalize a plugin, and we'll use those to talk to people about how we used to do internationalization and how there are slight refinements that we can do now to make it work better with Crowdin. And he and I will probably do that within the next one to three weeks. That's it for me. Great. Thanks, Mark. Uh, does anyone have any questions on that before we move on to the next topic? Or is I, it okay? I have a, a question, a very basic one maybe, but uh, regarding internationalization and localization, uh, when I used to do some internationalization with Java only, we could go up to internationalizing images or um, HTML files, uh, not just with um, um, you know the, the sentences translated, but also the look and feel and so on. Will Jenkins go up to that? You know, maybe changing the images if that ever makes sense, or you know, changing the way it is read from a left to right or right to left. Good question. And as far as I can tell right now, there isn't. So HTML files can and are included in the translation process. So, so that part, yes. But in terms of images or, or what, what I might call deeper, deeper changes, yep. behavioral changes, Jenkins doesn't really have support for it right now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bruno. Uh, any other questions before we move on? Yeah. Regarding this topic of how do we encourage uh, translation contributions, I really liked the way that the old translation support plugin worked in, a, in the sense that it provided a link at the bottom of every page to submit translations. And at the time, they were collected with a central server, which is no longer active. But the brilliance of that was if someone had this translation support plugin, I think it might have been called translation assistance plugin. I don't, I don't recall the exact name, but the, the brilliance of it was that it had a link that you could click on from the Jenkins UI that would 
immediately allow you to start filling in translations and submitting them to us. Um, so I think it would be uh, it would be cool to kind of take to think about that idea and think about how we might be able to apply that to crowd in uh, in a way that we could maybe put a link at the bottom of the the um, Jenkins UI that might direct people to crowd in to just immediately start filling in uh, their translations because that kind of lowers the barrier to entry. And I think that was one of the reasons that the old system was very successful because it lowered the bar, the barrier to entry in that way. Yeah, that's brilliant, Basil. Uh, for the time being, we only have some plugins, um, some Jenkins plugins available that we can translate for the time being. The core is not yet uh, entered into the crowding system. And the thing is, we could have a link, as you say, for existing plugins which are already registered within crowding. And for plugins which are not yet, we could have some kind of another link that could um, start something with AppDesk, or maybe that's not such a good idea because of the spam we could get, but that um, triggers something so that we know that somebody wants to help with the plugin which is not translated yet, all the parts of Jenkins which is not translated yet. That would be really helpful, I think. Thank you for this suggestion, Basil. Yeah, so, so to, to work off that idea, could you envision that this, this facility were somehow detecting, hey, I'm running in non-English language and I'm, this message that I'm seeing on screen is in fact still the English language version, show them a choice to go somewhere to help convert it. I, I think I see your point, Basil. It sounds very attractive. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you look at the plugins, you, you don't have to do this right now, but if you look at the plugins website for the translation assistance plugin or whatever the name of it was, they have a screenshot uh, and the screenshot shows the kind of the old UI. So there's a link in the footer, you would click on the link and it would give you a bunch of strings, kind of like the crowd in UI does. And you could just hit submit to submit them to a central server, um, which is now shut down. So I think, you know, if, if, the idea would be we just give people that link, but instead of our own user interface, it would go to the crowd in one, and then they could do the same thing. Um, but the, you know, we'd have to be able to detect whether that plugin is using crowd in, where to direct them, and, and things like that. Yeah, but and th but those are in fact solvable, solvable. I mean, in context, I know that the little subsection of help that's being displayed is coming from a specific plugin because it tells me the plugin that contributes that. And so that kind of information has got to be available. I think it sounds it very is. interesting. Yeah. Good. All right. Thanks. Thank Back you so to you, much. Kevin. Yeah. Uh, great. So if uh, there are no more questions on that, we'll move on to the June LTS change log, upgrade guide, and blog posts. Uh, so I submitted the uh, pull request uh, last week for the June LTS, and I'm currently putting a draft together for the blog post about the SVG replacement uh, based on Basil's feedback in the uh, request itself. Um, I'm going to be going over that with Mark uh, a little after this to just get some more structure to it and take a look and see what else I can add. Um, there's still a little bit of the format that I want to make sure I understand and have ready to go. Um, outside of that, though, um, everything's uh, the feedback's been given. We're getting a lot of traction. There are a couple of other, other tickets that are uh, linked to the SVG replacement item. So um, just looking through those, getting further information from there as well, and, and making sure that I have a full comprehension of everything uh, prior to writing. <clears throat> Uh, the changelog PR needs review and refinement. Um, yeah, so Kevin, there. Yeah, that that one's sort of my my voice on the my concern that it's if you if you let's see, and I don't think you can even view visualize this one, but if you go to the oh, I'll have to put it into it. If we were to look at this in the visualization view, mm -hmm. uh, were it available, what we would see is. 15, 20 or more UI improvement items as individual line items that are each one by itself 
doesn't look terribly interesting. The bigger picture is that there's a major UI improvement. And I'm not not yet settled on what the best way is to express that in this in this change log. Got it. Okay, great. Thanks for clarifying, Mark. Appreciate it. Would it be good to just group them into themes and write one paragraph about each theme for maybe a handful of themes, like three to five themes, for example, plugin manager improvements, um, configure project improvements, or things like that, like high level? Yeah, that, that might be, that may be the technique because what I detected three or four themes and I actually grouped them in the pull request by those themes with a comment above each. So I may, I may experiment with that just as an alternative, Kevin, because I'm, mm -hmm. I'm wrestling with this one. The, this is a cool release. It's got some brilliant functionality in it and the change log sometimes obscures it by being too detailed. Got it. Can we add screenshots to it? Because that would that would make it even more compelling. Well, that and, might not and, be possible. But we, I don't have a way to do screenshots. But if we want that, we could certainly do a blog post that highlights this, and then then we can do the full story, right? And that maybe we've certainly done. We did a, a full webinar on two seventy seven point one when we did the tables to divs transition, and we could do the same thing here as a blog post and a webinar on hey, look what's coming. And then we can talk high level, we can show pictures, we can demonstrate. And that may be the thing to do here is just admit this one is large enough that it really needs a separate webinar. That makes sense. Great. Uh, any other questions before we move on to the next item under the June LTS change log? Okay. Um, so, uh, Again, Basil created the required Java 11 epic and documentation related tasks. Um, so right now the first week of release is scheduled for June 21st and the first LTS to require Java 11 will, looks to be September, 2022. Um, then, and uh, in that regard, uh, these are the four document tasks that Basil created. Um, he's assigned them to himself, but there are a couple here that I might be able to take over or help with just due to what I'm going to be doing, my experience and everything else. Um, so Basil, I was hoping that you'd be able to kind of just take us through those. And um, if there, once we get through those, uh, just if I have questions or anything like that, I can ask them for it and uh, get some better insight. So. Yeah, absolutely. Sounds great. Awesome. Great. Uh, so Kevin, if you'll just click yeah. the links for each of those, I, I think that'll give us a, a, a vehicle okay. for Basel to, to get, and start from the very top. Oh, well, yeah, okay. okay. Bottom one is fine too, but for me, that top one, mm -hmm. yeah. So, so this, uh, this is referring to the changes in the packaging repository. And these pages are visible if you go to Jenkins.io and click on the download Jenkins link, it'll take you to a list of packages that we build and publish. And in the footer of, or sorry, the header of that page, I guess it's header.html, uh, it has a link, it has a list of uh, releases and the minimum Java version. Yeah, you could you could also find it in the UI uh, in, in the on the actual website. There, yeah, exactly. So somewhere on this page, um, I think it might be um, it might be if you click on one of the um, one of the packages, like uh, like for example, I think if we if we I can't remember where to find it. Sorry, on Kevin. Page. Yeah, go on sorry. up to go on up to Ubuntu slash Debian on either oh, the left or the right hand side. Yeah. Sorry. So yeah. So on this page at the very bottom, it says uh, you know two point one six four requires Java eight or Java eleven. So basically, that list um, needs to get updated um, to show the new. A requirement for Java 11, um, but there's a complication with this page in that the uh, the code you're looking at to generate that text, it's currently the same HTML file for both the LTS and the weekly. Uh, so that's really the difficult part of this task is to figure out how to show something different for the weekly compared to the LTS. So the, the URL that we're looking at right now is slash Debian, but mm -hmm. there's another there's another URL, which Mark probably remembers offhand, that, that shows the LTS download link. Um, if, for example, I think you could get to it if you go back up uh, mm -hmm. and 
and then go to um, um, the uh, the page for the stable. Um, yeah, so left hand column. Uh, the left hand column. Yeah, there's Ubuntu left hand slash, column Ubuntu slash yeah, Debian. Right. Okay. So on that link, that shows you this. I think that shows the same information down there. Mm -hmm. So the, the challenge with this is to figure out how to keep that the same for this page, but to change that text for the other page, for the, the page for the weekly release. Do you see the point? Yeah, because the LTS is going to come out after the weeklies have already been coming out. And so yeah. we have to make sure that the weeklies get updated and show the relevant information. But at the same time, the LTS uh, won't be able to require that until it's released in or until we get to that point. Yeah, so I think this would have been a trivial, just updating one string and one file if it weren't for, for this complication. So I think right. it could just be done by um, you know, copying and pasting the text or finding some way to include a different string on a different page. I haven't looked into it very closely. So mm -hmm. something that, to that effect. Yeah, okay. and actually uh, there is a little bit of JavaScript available that would apparently allow a page to dynamically change its content based on its URL. So we may actually, with a little bit of JavaScript embedded, have the facility to do this. Wonderful. I have no idea if it works. I'm not a JavaScript coder, but. <laughs> and um, Mark, is that something that we'd be able to work on together or check out or? I think so. Experiment? Yeah. Great. We, we can certainly toy with it to see. Because you right. need to know how to how to modify this, and mm -hmm. and Basel's right on the weekly side. We on both sides, we want to accurately describe what the the version requirements are. It would be better for this page, the stable one, if mm -hmm. it gave stable version numbers instead of just giving weekly version numbers. Right, the reader mm -hmm. of this page doesn't know that two point fifty four was some was followed by some LTS sometime later they're they're thinking lts so mm -hmm. it's a good good excuse for us to do it in general great awesome thank you so much basil appreciate uh walking through that one uh, is there anything else on um this specific thing or uh, on this one that uh you want to mention or is is that everything that's all okay great thank you uh okay and then we'll take a look at the user documentation updates as well yeah so this and this ticket I went through, um, basically did a, a grep through the entire Jenkins.io repository looking for um, any place where I found the string Java aid, JDK aid, JRE aid, anything Java related and the number eight. Um, mm -hmm. And as, at a high level, that's not, that's not, maybe not the best way of going about this because what that shows is things that are incorrect that need to be corrected, but that doesn't that process or that methodology doesn't necessarily highlight things that need that need to be added to explain new things. Um, but so this is the same methodology I used for system D. And mm -hmm. once I worked on that, Mark very correctly pointed out, well, it's not just a matter of correcting the now incorrect pages, but also adding new pages about the system, the new system D functionality. Uh, so we worked on that together to not only go through this process, but also to, to add new content. I don't think that we'll really need any new content about Java 11. Um, maybe Mark has a different opinion, but um, there aren't really any new installation requirements or management requirements. So I, I don't believe that, that we would need to write any new content here, apart from just how to upgrade. And we already have a page for that. And it's mm -hmm. even linking to a YouTube video about how to upgrade. So. Um, I think that all that's needed is to just update everything that's going to be wrong to the correct values rather than writing new content. The, the, would you agree about that, Mark? Or did you think that we need I new do. content here? No, I, I think you're right. In the main, if we discover something where we're missing content, we should be ashamed of ourselves because we've been shipping Java 11 support for over two years, right? So right. If, if we find something missing, it's not a new missing. It's, wow, we should have had this for a long time. Right. Yeah. So with that, with that point aside, this all of these bullet points are just going through the existing content mm -hmm. and uh, finding any places that need to be updated. Um, and the 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 general theme here is, you know, if it says Java eight or eleven, to simply change that text to say um, Java eleven. And there there are some places where there's two sections. 
a mm -hmm. section for Java 8 and a section for Java 11. So the, the, the Java 8 section can just be deleted in those cases. And, and what, one thing I noted in this ticket is that a lot of the times the wording is set up to introduce a contrast between these two sections. Uh, so a, a mechanical removal of one section um, might still result in an awkward flow of the text if the text is setting you up for a contrast and then you only get one half of the contrast rather than the two, the two sides of the contrast. So one thing I noticed as I was reading these pages was that if I was going through and mechanically deleting the Java 8 sections that I had to, I would probably need to reword some of the text a little bit to now uh, read smoothly under the, under the assumption that there's no contrast being made anymore. There's just only one thing now. So, um, so at, at a high level, it's a very mechanical change, but then uh, at a more um, low level, I think there might, there might be some areas that just need to be phrased more smoothly to, to deal with this lack of uh, two, two items being contrasted. And, and that, that's probably the most subjective part of this, this change. And the, the other subjective part of this is um, this, uh, again, this perennial issue with LTS versus weekly um, because uh, there's only, we don't have branches in the Jenkins.io documentation. They don't, there's only one uh, primary branch that shows the latest version of the docs. Um, and I think for system D, we kind of took a compromise approach where in some cases we just changed the page to refer to the weekly version and decided, okay, we're, we're all right with this not being very accurate for a period of three to four months until the LTS is released. And if, the, if it's some very minor section of a minor page, it might not be worth spending too much time to you know, write the page for, to, to describe both weekly and LTS and then go back in three months and revise that again. It's a, it's a lot of work to do that. And if it's a minor section of a minor page, that effort may not be the best use of time. Um, but I think for system D for the, there's one major page that we, we did, I think, edit that to describe both weekly and LTS, um, because in one case, in, in, in the main page about managing services, I think Mark felt that it was important to, to have that page remain accurate for LTS, since it was the primary discussion of that topic. So that might be necessary here as well. If, if there's yeah, I think there is one primary, if you scroll up, um, there's one primary page about Java. Yeah, that the very first link, um, you know, requirements slash Java dot a doc. I think that's really the main uh, primary documentation page that describes Java support. So if, if, any, if, if there were any page where we do that extra work of describing LTS and weekly and then going back and revising it, it would probably be that page rather than, for example, these other obscure pages like uh, Jenkins command parameters dot a doc, which has a section at the very bottom about these um, old Java versions. You know, that might not be the highest priority to go and rephrase that for LTS and weekly and go back and update it in three months. We'd probably be okay living with that page just being slightly inaccurate for LTS users for, for two to three months or three to four months, so. Well, and right. to, to further support what Basel was saying, I think it is perfectly okay for us to, just like we're doing with the screenshot project, we're taking screenshots from a weekly version, 2.346 or later, because that will be what LTS looks like in June. And we've accepted for the screenshot project that for from now until the June LTS, that screenshot is not quite accurate. In, in most cases, it's actually still better than what we had before, than what it's replacing. Because what it's replacing was so old. And in this case, most of these, with, with a notable exception that, that Basel noted, may be the first, first one. All the others, I think it's perfectly fine if they just act like Java 8 is no longer supported. Because we don't want people doing new, new installations and new works with new work with Java 8. Even if it is still supported, we don't want to inspire them to use it. Right, and where the end goal is to have everyone on Java 11 right. pushing a narrative where we're kind of still supporting that is just going to send the wrong message. Right, exactly. Yeah, so I think it's it's safe, Kevin, when you start looking at this one, if you're willing to look at this one, that mm -hmm. that there, there are places there where you'll just 
delete entire chunks that are referring to Java 8. And we yeah. accept that in the short term, hey, we're not admitting that we still support Java 8 in this aspect. Right. Yeah, no, and I, I feel absolutely uh, capable and comfortable taking on those two documentation tickets, helping out, um, updating that stuff, no problem at all. Um, uh, one question I did want to ask Basil, uh, as far as the original value versus new value stuff, um, I mean, is this kind of just where you were marking down what changes you found needed to be made, or are these the exact changes that should be made? I guess. No, this is the his, this is the edit history of the uh, the Jira ticket itself, and mm -hmm. uh, I I basically I wrote I wrote this issue description, and then after I had finished writing it, I wanted to add an additional note at the bottom about this this perennial issue of LTS versus, so I went back and added some extra text. Okay. And that's, so that's what you see there. So when I'm, when I'm browsing Jira, I usually hide that view and just look at the comments view mm -hmm. in order for me not to, because I'm normally not so interested in the edit history of the description, mm -hmm. um, but it, it's useful for me when I want to go back and see if someone made an edit, what the original version is. I don't think in this, I, I, I might have, I, I might have done better in this case to just add a comment with my note, whether it's edit the original description, but either way, I don't think it matters too much. Yeah, no, and that's fine. I, it was more uh, my curiosity since I was just looking at the ticket really kind of in depth for the first time off Jenkins okay. Jira. Sure. So uh, yeah, so I, it was more my curiosity of what the all meant in this case and if those were actually uh, part of the needed changes or not. So thank you for clarifying that. I appreciate it. Yeah, and GitHub too, there's a way to look at it for any uh, comment on GitHub, there's a way to look at the edit history for that comment as well. Uh, so I think that that's mostly just a matter of uh, the tool allowing you to look at um, the, edit, the edit history. And, and sometimes that's uh, very valuable, valuable for me because people will sometimes paste stuff into Jira and um, as when people go and edit it, they sometimes lose the formatting. So it's sometimes valuable to be able to go back and see how it was originally formatted before someone made an edit and messed up the formatting. So that's what I that's what I use that feature for the most. Got it. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. And then um, the other two tickets, Basil, were the upgrade guide and the what was the last one? The blog post that I have. Yeah. I didn't fill in any descriptions in these yet, or at least not yet, um, because I was mm -hmm. planning on writing them myself. But if you if you want me to discuss what I had in mind, I could do that. If that's if we wanted to use this meeting for that purpose, is that what you had uh, in mind, or uh, Mark, if uh, if you want to fill that one, I'm not because I'm not sure on that case. So. so I have no objections, Basil. But I trust also what you're going to describe will be. I've loved your past blog posts the Guava post and the system B post, they were both brilliant. And, um, and so- For this one, I'm gonna to try to talk about uh, the nature of this migration because it's not, it's, not it's not the usual Java upgrade for, like we've done for Java seven to eight and uh, before that six to seven. Um, you know, Java 11 introduces a lot of incompatibilities. So I think I'm gonna to try to explain what those are and what that means to uh, administrators um, and one of the big ones is this removal of JAXB, which affects Jenkins the most. Um, but more generally, kind of reflecting on the, um, the, the evolution of the, the Java community and how uh, 11 was a release that broke compatibility in some ways that were unprecedented. Um, and the same will be the case for 17. So kind of explaining to administrators who might not be familiar with Java programming on a day-to-day -day basis that, you know, this is not, um, you know, that the, the community has gone in a direction that is uh, different from some of the past um, releases. And I think um, explaining that in a, to a target audience of Jenkins administrators who might not necessarily be Java developers themselves, I think that's probably the goal of my blog post. Um, so I'm hoping to kind of cover that that topic, uh, as well as the usual, how to file issues and um, how to upgrade your plugins and things like that. So, great. And I think for the for the upgrade guide, it's just going to be the the uh, how to file issues and upgrade your plugins portion of the blog post. 
just repeat it. So that's what I'm, I'm going to start writing that today, hopefully. But I, I plan on sharing a draft in these tickets. I'll probably write it in Google Docs and then share the draft here. And uh, yeah, I'll be happy to, to get some people to read the draft and to leave comments on it. So in terms of getting this information to the users, the blog post can certainly be highlighted to the users as a link from the, the June 21st change log saying, hey, here's this. We don't really have an upgrade guide for weekly. So I'm prone to say that we'll point them to the change log from the change log to the blog post for the weekly. And this upgrade guide will be mostly for LTS. Is that, does that yeah. work for you? Okay. Yeah. Good. I think that's what we did for Guava, but if we didn't, then we should have, cause it's great. Okay, great. Thank you. Thanks for the clarity. Great. Thanks so much, Basil. Appreciate all of that. Um, and I know we're running up against time. So uh, Mark, do you want to just quickly go over the sheet code Africa? Item? Yeah, this is a, a one minute update. It's that the screenshots update prog project, the screenshot updates project has surveyed the Jenkins.io website, www.jenkins.io looking for what pages that need a screenshot update and identified them. And they did a number of them. And the ones that they didn't do are still in our list. So we know to do them. So nice, nice help there. The inclusive naming project had actually already touched the Jenkins documentation long ago, well before she caught Africa. Most of the, all the pull requests from this change, this particular project were to specific plugins. So good work, thanks to them. That's it for me. Great. Great. Uh, does anyone have anything else before we wrap up for today? Nope. All right. And uh, thinks we can wrap up now, Mark, or end recording.